Sexy Sims, and we are back with more Hakuoki Kyoto wins in Iba's route. Yay! And so far, so good. This has been a good route. I mean, we've only done one part, and we've gotten a lot of, like, scenes with him. So not even counting the two that we skipped through that we did in Yamazaki's route. So anyway, uh, now we're going to go back to our skipping where we were. Oh, sweetie! Share. <laughs> I love how and that comes up and just like <laughs> zooms in on his chest and you're like, okay, wow, well, game. Um, yes, please. Okay. And then we're talking to them. After a moment, Kondo turned around and faced me directly. Interesting. You see, Iba coordinated everything to ensure this meeting took place. Ah! Iba then appeared from behind the building as if he was summoned. He's magical. Hello, Spacey. I wish I was here to see you under different circumstances. Oh, he led us back inside the compounds in order to discuss the situation with the Furies. Hijikata stood behind, listening with intent. Koda was performing experiments with a serum, which they referred to as the Water of Life, that turned some Shinsengumi men into Furies. I can't remember the voice I gave him, so he's just gonna kind of... He almost sounds like... Uh, condo, but whatever. Same difference. <laughs> they're the same. They're the same guy. I don't know. Apparently, do doctors had to be bald, is all I'm saying. Was that a thing? Like, you're a doctor. You must be bald. Damn. Or it's just they're so stressed out, they go bald. Because he's bald. My dad's bald. I'm just saying. Two out of the two doctors in this game, bald. Therefore, it is 100% fact. <laughs> well, it's fact in the game. Furies... His descriptions matched the white-haired creatures I had seen on my first night in Kyoto. Dr. Masumoto nodded, then turned to Ibo, whose uh, voice sounded oddly meek. Originally, research on the Furies was strictly performed by the Shogunate, who kept it secret. Only a select few with the Bakushin were aware of this, so I assumed this operation was one with top-class confidentiality, but... We, Okuzume, were also notified about the experiments just in case something terrible were to happen that required our aid. Iba's expression turned sour as his sentence trailed off, as if he was reopening an old wound, and he turned his head to the side. The furies from the initial batch of tests were horrible. Absolutely horrible. We lost a lot of good men, and not just men who became furies, but men charged with stopping them. So when I'd heard rumors that the Shinsengumi were performing similar experiments, I had to see for myself if they were... Uh, to face the same fate. Iba looked in Hijikata's direction, waiting for him to see if he had anything to contribute. Okay, so Iba hopefully is not going to become one, but every other one of these motherfuckers becomes a fury in our in the path that we're on with them. You know what I mean? Hijikata gave a heavy sigh. Well, if you're as in the know as you seem, then it'd be pointless for us to keep hiding it, huh? If that's true, we were ordered by the Shogunate to research the serum in the Furies. As for the question of why, it's a long story best saved for another time, but... The person responsible for bringing the serum to us was Kodo. Kodo was... doing research on Furies? When my father's name was dropped, Iba immediately turned to face me. I gave a small nod. Yes, I didn't know anything about it either until I came here looking for him. Iba's eyes suddenly widened, and they looked frantic as he faced Dr. Masumoto, who merely nodded. Then Iba, who seemed unsatisfied that everyone else was lukewarm to the fake... Uh, to the... To the news. <laughs> to the news? Fa I'm like, to the face... I'm skipping words. To the face... Kondo news, and Hijikata unsatisfied seemed who? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, everyone else was lukewarm to the news, faced Kondo and Hijikata. Kondo, Toshi... Please be honest with me. What does the Shinsengumi plan to do with the Furies in the future? Hijikata's brows furrowed, then he paced back and forth, caught in a pause as he attempted to gather the right words. Haven't thought about it. Dude, I don't fucking know! Like, what do you mean by plan to do? A research is performed under direct order of the Shogunate. Quitting would be insubordination. Kondo's face scrunched, and he kept silent, his eyes fixed on the floor in front of him. Uh-oh. I assume this means Kondo shares the same feelings as Hijikata. So, if your experiments carry on as usual, and an outbreak beyond your control occurs, what's your contingency plan? Are you prepared for this? 
I mean, you have people in your headquarters that are incapable of lifting a sword. As he cut himself off, Iba glanced in my direction with a look of concern. Hey! I know you weren't talking about me. I mean, yes, you should have been, but I know damn well you were talking about Okita and fucking Sanan, but Sanan's already a fury. You just don't know it, but... And Okita, I mean... Neither Kondo nor Hijikata answered, and they closed their eyes and crossed their arms and sank. Hey, I'm a demon, and I'm just here to get hurt. I kind of suck at being a demon. Look, if it's an issue of going against the orders from the Shogunate, then perhaps I can work to convince some of the higher-ups personally. I agree with Iba. The Furies aren't something that your group can manage alone. Dr. Masumoto's tone was stern, but Kondo and Hijikata were staring at the floor. Toshi! Iba became impatient. Enough! I'm aware of the risks we're taking with this research. Then... But its potential in the battlefield is too much to ignore. Besides... He cut himself off. Even when he looked frustrated, the structure of his face was quite handsome. Okay, why are you fawning over Hijikata? You're in love with Eva. God damn it, girl. Look to the right. Look to the right. No, for, no, keep, no. See, I'm looking to the left, too. I know. The thing is, is all three of them are on the... There's three people on the screen, and you're literally looking at Hijikata the entire time you're clicking. Like, Eva's your, the love of your life over here right now for the moment. Why are you looking at Hijikata? Look at Eva's hair. It's just so flowy and beautiful. And Hijikata's long and lank. Like, <laughs> I like the fluffy. I like the fluffy hair. I can't wait till we get to Ido Blossoms when we see all their makeovers. It's amazing, guys. It's amazing. You think you love them now? You're going to be like, oh my god, I love them again! Fall in love all over again. Anyway. If we're to quit our research now, then what becomes of those who have become furies now? Well... Iba couldn't come up with a solution on the spot, and he looked down with a sheepish expression. Then someone arrived and broke the silence. I was going to say, Sonnen. Aha! Oh, I still love you! The only person who doesn't get... I mean, clothes-wise, yes, they change his outfit, but they do nothing else with Sonnen, and it makes me a little sad. Like, is it just because he's too perfect the way he is? They're like, nah, your hair's fine. Like, not even... Nothing. Nothing. Not even a slight floof. Not even a trim. Nothing. Everybody else gets all new looks, and he's just like, we give you a new wardrobe, but that's it. Poor bro. Why are they going to diss him like that? Why are they going to diss my glasses? Pardon my intrusion, but if you don't have an answer to that question, allow me to have a go. Sonnen, are you feeling okay? Well, I'm in no shape to use a sword or anything like that, but I have enough strength to talk. Um, I'm in no shape to use a sword. Uh, but you're a fury, so wait, why? Oh, maybe he hasn't quite gotten over his... He hasn't quite healed fully from being a fear? I'm not quite sure where the... I mean, Dr. Masumoto came to check everyone out, right? Sanan's already been turned into a fury. Oh, anyway. Sanan joined our circle, then he turned to face both Dr. Masumoto and Iba. If the water of life is deemed to be too dangerous for anyone to control, then I'm sure an order to exterminate the furies would be made. Which includes me in that tally. No! What? Iba was shocked by Sanan's suggestion. He appeared out of breath, struggling to find words that were sympathetic to Sanan's position. Look! I'm like a demon queen, so I'll take all the furies and you'll be my demon horde. That's cool. Ah! Now Spacey understands how we're going to get fucking Spacey Man Harem. Yes. You'll all be furies, and you'll be my furies, and I will call you my furies. <laughs> Sonnen, why did you take the serum? Sonnen simply stared back at him, stoic as ever. I could have sworn I saw a brief flash of crimson in Sonnen's eyes as he began to smile wryly. Don't pity me, Iba. There's no need to worry. I'm actually happy that I became a fury. What? Happy? Yes. When I injured my left arm, the warrior in me died. However, thanks to the Water of Life, he has been resurrected. If you were in my position, losing your arm, being unable to help your comrades fight in battle, being useless, I'm sure you can imagine my pain. It seemed as though Iba was unable to prove any of the Shinzengumi men wrong, and he was silent. He'd known Kondo, Hijikata, and the others from back in their Edo days, which meant that he knew Sanan then as well. To hear that one of his old friends had become a fury, I'm sure it caused him a great deal of pain, and he was confronted with a moral dilemma. 
I appreciate the words of caution from you and Dr. Masumoto, but I feel bad about it all, but... Putting a premature end to all of our research would be the same as forfeiting Sanon's life. So not his wife, but anyway. If we can locate Ko Kodo, then we may be able to find a way to reverse the effects on Sanon and the other Furies. Perhaps to become humans again. Sanon smiled at uh, Kondo, but it seemed to me that he was wary of any optimism as he winced at his mortality being mentioned in plain conversation. However, I want to make it clear that I never once said I wanted to become human again. The Shinsengumi were adamant about their reasons for continuing their research and experiments. It's made it seem like an impossible task for either Dr. Masumoto or Iba to convince them otherwise, as the stakes were close to the chest. As a doctor, I'm, I'm obligated to tell you otherwise. However, if the lives of your warriors, like Sanan, are at risk, then I submit to your discretion. I suppose we have no choice but to find Koto as soon as possible. For now, I'll, I shall devote energy to developing a medicine to help treat the serum's bad symptoms. Although I'm sure it won't do much. Medicine! Used to treat fury bloodlust. Aha, and this is where it comes, so see? And then when Sanan's like, here, here's this medicine that we decide to give to Heisuke or not. No, I'm sure it will be more than we can ask for. We greatly appreciate the both of you for your help. I can't do his voice anymore, I don't know. Although there were reservations about what's to come, the conversation settled kindly, at least. There are so many hidden Eba scenes. I love this. Again, it's because they added him. But, I mean, geez. Oh, no. The tea became cold. I'll make a fresh pot right away. I stood up. I grabbed the tray with everyone's cups on it and went out into the hallway. Then I saw someone run off in a panicked state down the hall. I squinted to get a peek, and it looked like... I ran after them, tray in hand, to get a better look. Wait! I turned the corner and I caught up to the hustling shadow. I knew it was him, and he stood there waiting. What is it you want from me? If you took the effort to follow me, then surely you must have something to say. Well, um... I could almost feel the blood draining from my body at the pressure to answer overwhelmed me. What the fuck were you doing, bitch? I did my best to stay composed, and I stood up straight, ready to answer. Were you listening in on the conversation in Kondo's room from the hallway just now? Takeda snorted, deflecting the question, and he turned the question back on me. So, is it a crime now for a captain of the Shinsugumi to walk by the chief's room? Well, no, but... As I stumbled for words, Takeda seemed smug as if he'd stumped me. I have nothing to hide, but perhaps you do, because your conversations were rather sensitive, hmm? What should I do? Call for someone. That's what we're supposed to do, yeah. Takeda is technically a captain of the Shinsengumi, and I had no way of knowing how much, if anything, he heard in that room. If I answered his questions by giving out information that I wasn't entitled to give, then I'd be in deep trouble. I have to brew some more tea, so if you'll please excuse me. I bowed, turning around to rush toward the kitchen. Wait a minute. Takeda snagged my shoulder with a tight grip. Ow! Let go of me! I already told you I need to be somewhere. So you're trying to make a run for it, huh? Well, I won't let you. We're not done here. He's so fucking douchey. I closed my eyes tightly, and in my head I saw... Iba. Not Kondo, nor Hijikata for some reason. It was Iba instead. Help me, Iba! As I attempted to scream, Takeda covered my mouth with his coarse hand. Don't scream. Who are you trying to call? How? You got my mouth covered. How am I supposed to answer you? That man, Iba, was it? Supposedly he's some big shot Okazume for the Shogun. Shogun. Why is that man here? Better make sure he's not telling the chief or the commander things they don't need to hear. Mm! I was struggling under Takeda's grasp, and even though my mouth was still covered, I could shake. Things... Things they don't need to hear, huh? Is there something you're keeping from them? Yeah. Surprised, Takeda let go of my mouth. You are taking an awful long time to brew and pour tea, so I can't have to check on you. You were Takeda, right? Was it? Long time no see. Even though Eva was smiling, his eyes were intently focused on Takeda. He looked guarded. Ugh. Takeda seethed with contempt, biting his lips. Iba gently guided me behind him protectively as he whispered to me. Oh. He called my name earlier, asking for help. Thank you. It made my day. Oh. 
Remembering that moment made my cheeks flare up. Why did I scream Eba's name instead of one of the other warriors? We were exchanging confidential information. Oh. I can only be heard by our warriors. You're an outsider. Stay out of this. That's not true. He was trying to kill me. Besides, the hell are you doing here in our compounds? I was accompanying Dr. Masumoto, and it was imperative that we discuss the health and conditions of your men. <clears throat> I don't know how much of that is true. Takeda didn't appear to believe Iba for a second, but... If there's something you'd like to say, you're more than welcome to ask me in front of Kondo. However, I too will have something to tell Kondo. Iba and Takeda exchanged heated glances for a few more moments. It's interesting that we see more of Takeda too, because we barely saw see him at all, but... Interesting. Then Takeda broke the stare, looking away in an irritable manner. There is nothing I want to say to you. I'll be on my way then. Oh, he's such a diva. Takeda huffed and walked away. Thank you so much for helping me, Iba. You're welcome. I know you can count on me. You know you can count on me whenever there's a sniff of danger. I know, because you're so pretty. Remember what I told you all those years ago? That I'd protect you no matter the circumstances? Yes. The memory of that time, now far removed, was hazy, but I remember Hachiro making this promise to me as his slender hands clasped mine together. Oh. Who would have thought we'd find each other again? To find each other once again, now that we've matured. Mm. Once, now that we've all grown up. After all this time, he kept his promise. Takeda doesn't know I'm a girl, though. So it must look weird. He's like, he called my name and let me mean something. He's like... Stop being gay for a second. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that must have looked weird to him. He's like, the hell? He's like, dude, what is going None of your business. And he then I heard some footsteps creep behind us. I saw Decatur walking over here a second ago. Was he speaking with the two of you? Sonnen, I wasn't sure how to describe the events that just transpired, but Sonnen turned to look at Iba for an, expl for an explanation anyway. Psh, nobody trusts me. Iba, it came to my attention that you and Takeda were involved in an altercation. It'd be wise to keep clearer heads in the future. Oh no! The tea became cold. It wasn't Iba's fault. I tried to explain the situation, but Sanin cut me off. The reason for Takeda's foul mood may be related to something like the recent slump I was in. I suggest that you don't provoke him any further. During your slump? Iba looked puzzled, but Sanin nodded. As a master of the Koshu military science... He'd grown used to people depending on his expertise. That is, until Ito joined our ranks. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, I remembered the mood during the time of Ito's first arrival. <gasps> so, like, now we're supposed to feel bad for Takeda? He's such a fucking douche, but he's pretty. But he's such a fucking douche. That's right. It was Ito's presence that served as the straw that broke the camel's back for Sanin, which drove him to drink the water of life. Sanin smiled with a clear self-derision. He's desperate to make his mark in the Shinsengumi, just as I am. But it gives him no right to take out his frustration on people he thinks are beneath him. That's inexcusable. Well, you do have a point. He should be reprimanded for exploiting his position in the interest of flaunting power over others. However, as they say, the con cornered rat will bite the cat. It's better for us to be safe than sorry. Sanin followed his statement with a stoic gaze in Iba's direction. I'd advise for you to watch your back as well. If you underestimate him, you'll be in for an unpleasant surprise. He may get the best of you. Yes, I'll be sure to keep that in mind. Sonnen raised an eyebrow at Iba's response, then he curtly bowed and turned around. He made a swift return for his room, looking over his shoulder as if to avoid being seen by others. Iba looked as if he had something more to say as we watched Sonnen go. I wouldn't blame him. Sonnen, whom he'd known since the Edo days, had become a fury. I'm sure he feels the pain of loss in his own way, a way different than Kondo's or Hijikata's. After a silent pause, Iba looked at me. Same goes for you as well. Watch out for Takeda. Don't let yourself be caught alone with him. Yes, I know. If something happens, no matter how big or small, send me a letter and I'll come for you. Thank you so much. I knew that I couldn't let my guard down, but in this moment, I felt so safe and relieved with him. After sharing a smile, Iba and I returned to the room. 
Both Kondo and Dr. Masumoto seemed so wrapped up in their conversation about the physical exams, it was as if they didn't realize we'd left the room. Ah, yes. Doctor, how do the physicals go? Ah, yes. About that. This sure is a headache. What? Why is that? Why do you mean, why? The amount of injured and sick warriors is nearly a third of your force. What? Impossible! It's not only possible, Kondo, it's the truth. What have you been doing to these poor men? Cuts, lacerations, bowel pain. This entire place is lousy with, well, lice for one. Ew! Seriously? I'm so embarrassed to hear this. I never would have imagined. First, you need to set aside a room dedicated for medical care. Sick men can be sent there. Second, you need to clean this place up. Otherwise, I won't be able to help you. Understood. I'll get to it this instant. Ah, and this is where we all do the cleaning. So we were ordered to clean the entire compound. We've seen this scene, the cleaning scene, anyway. Decatur screams like a girl. Oh, shit. What do we do here? It's not any of my business. Kazama shows up. Um, my father. Huh, interesting. So I'm wondering if we say the demons. Sorry, booger. Um, when we're trying to get in Kazama's pants. Anyway, my father. If only something were to happen. Only if something were to happen. That's our next choice, by the way. I was just reading it out. I don't know I was reading it all out. Spoiler. May 1866. A year had passed since we'd moved to the Nishi Hongwanji Temple, and I'd become quite accustomed to my life here. Interesting. We got lots of scenes with Iba. Ever since the incident with Takeda questioning me aggressively, Iba would occasionally visit the compounds. I'm inclined to think he visits us because he's trying to watch out for me. But he has also had a long-lasting relationship with the captains of the Shinsengumi since their days back in... Sh Shie... 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 A Shiei Hall. Shiei Hall. There's too many vowels. I can't do it. Anyway. I know every single time we come up to that, I'm like, I can't fucking figure that out. Anyway. She A Shiei Hall. Shiei Shiei. Oh my god. Iba's approachable and warm demeanor made it easy for the other warriors to warm up to him and to hold him in high regards. However, Takeda, for obvious reasons, still didn't seem fond of Iba. Because everyone else likes him and he doesn't like you and you shady. During one of his aforementioned visits... Go ahead. Come at me from any angle. And I'll take you up on that offer. Yeah! I thought he was teaching, training us. I was like, yeah. Nice one! Next! Iba had visited while the men were conducting a training session. And Iba, being the skilled master he was, took part in some of the training exercises. His swordsmanship was so superb. As good if not better than some of the captains, that I couldn't help but be impressed. Perhaps the warriors have trained adequately for the day. I think it best to end training here. What? Over already? I mean, Ichiro is here, and I want to see him bust out his badass swordsmanship. The purpose of training is to improve one's swordsmanship, not for the sake of entertainment. And don't forget your duties. Fine, I guess. You guys, start cleaning up. Nagakura began gesturing his orders to the warriors to wrap up their session. Wait a sec. Can I get in on this? I don't want to lose this opportunity. Okita had suddenly appeared from the building. He walked in, sword in hand, ready to fight. Okita had curled his lips, smirking in a haughty fashion as he offered a sword to Iba. Of course, if you think you can't handle it, I won't force you. You're sick! He's going to kill you. They could be like brothers. Their brown hair and their green eyes. Although Akita's are like glowing green cat eyes, and then Iba's are like a softer, like, olivey peridot kind of color. And his are like glow. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Iba didn't even flinch or react to his offer. Please, it would be rude for me to reject your challenge, and as such, I'm obliged to accept. It's a pleasure, Okita. Okita grinned in response. Oh man! Oh man! Who would have thought I'd get to see a matchup like this? I guess I built up some good karma. Jeez, you look too excited. Soji versus Hachiro, huh? I wonder who'll win. As a member of the Shinsengumi, I'm obliged to root for Soji. 
Hey, everyone shut up and someone step up to revert referee this match or we'll never get started. I'll do it. All right, guys. Ready? Go. So not normal Toto voice, but anyway. As soon as Heist game uh, motioned the match to start, the whole area fell silent. Both men were enveloped in a fierce aura, and all of us watching stood idly by, unable to move. The vibe was tensely still. Neither man dropped their guard, making it difficult for either to strike. Just then, Okita lowered his sword ever so slightly. In the next moment, Iba thrust forward rapidly and he swung towards Okita. But Okita read Iba's body movements, anticipating the strike and deflecting Iba's sword. So he's, he's like the sword of the Shinsengumi, so he's probably supposed to be like the best, right? But he's also dying. It's so sad. Okita watched as Iba's stance had faltered, and Okita moved in to jab with the sword. Ugh. Iba saw through the first strike, parrying Okita's blade with a horizontal block. However, Okita unleashed a flurry of swings. As his blade danced wildly towards Iba, Okita's swift attacks were hard to follow in real time. It was almost impossible to believe that such techniques were being performed by a human. He could barely keep up. Um, Saito, who do you think is going to win this match? I turned to Saito, who was sitting beside me, and he responded at first with a small nod. Do you want to build a snowman? I miss you so much. <laughs> we'll always have... We'll always have Frozen. <laughs> oh, it's still one of my favorite moments. Well, there's little need to remind you what Soji is capable of. However, Hachiro is the heir of the... Uh, Renbukan? One of the foremost elite dojos in Edo. And he is tasked with protecting the Shogunate. The two of them had engaged in a few matches when we were at... She ate? Whatever. I can't say it. I cannot say it. My brain doesn't want to say it. Anyway. But back then, they were considered to be equally skilled. So, does that mean you don't know who's going to win? It looks as though it's already been decided. Huh? Just as I had asked that... Uh... Iba's sword was parried, and he dropped to his knees. Match point! As Heisuke declared the game over, Iba sighed in acceptance of his defeat. <gasps> oh, You know, I love Iba, don't get me wrong, but I'm really proud of Okita for, like, winning. Because, like, they keep talking about Iba being like, he's actually could be better than some of the captains. And it's like, look, I love him, and it's awesome that he's really good. But they're the Shinsengumi captains. They should be fucking awesome. And, like, I know some of them are going to be better things than others, but, like... So it's just, it's kind of nice to see Iba get his ass slightly kicked. It's not really kicked, you know what I'm saying? But like, there's a part of me that's like, yay, our Shinsugumi boys won. <laughs> As a whole, I know Okita did it, but I they all get credit for it, you know what I mean? I lost that one. Well, considering your opponent was Soji, I'd say you put up a damn good fight. I'll say, that match had everything. You guys went back and forth and there were a few close calls on Soji's end too. Yeah, got a little close at times, but... Okita's cold gaze, cold gaze beamed toward Iba as he stood over him. And this is all you have to give. And I could beat you any time of the day with my hands tied. Iba's brows furrowed slightly. And what do you mean by that, Okita? Oh, so you need me to spell it out for you? I used to think you were hot shit when it came to your swordsmanship. Okita sneered before making his next remark. Oh my god, you won, don't be a dick. Okay, now I'm just as sad that he won. Like, Jesus Christ, oh, you know what it is, though? I'm, you know what it is? It's because he's been sick and he hasn't been able to fight, so he's being a cocky prick, because otherwise he'd be like, nice game, bro. Good game, bro. But he's being a cocky prick because he can't fight, and he's upset and hurt, so he's being a douche about this tiny little thing. Oh, Okita, you poor thing. I feel for you. I just want to pat you on your little head. You probably stab me though, because you're a bitch, but. Your sword has become pale and lifeless. Okita's tone revealed his disinterest, and he shrugged before dismissing himself from the room. Iba stood up straight, and he shot an intense glare in the direction of the departing Okita. My sword is lifeless? Okita's words seemed like they stung Iba deeply. So, who's next? Sana, wanna go? Our weapons are too different for one on one. All right, then I'll... Just when it looked like Heisuke was about to volunteer himself. Wait, 
Oh, as we look towards the direction into which Okita left, Takeda walked in. Oh, no. Taking him a long time to get here. If you're looking for a new contender, would you mind if I threw my hat in the ring? I'd love to see Iba's... Oh. Kotengu? For myself. Seeing it's, as it's become the talk of the town. What's a Kotengu? We're going to find out. Iba's Kotengu. Hachiro's nickname at Iba Dojo. Huh. Kotengu. Kotengu? Yeah. Iba. Takeda. What is he trying to pull? He's going to fucking kill Iba is what he's going to do. I wasn't the only one who sensed something was off, as the captains looked bewildered by his entrance. Um, I'm... No, oh, don't tell me someone of your strength and stature can't handle a match with a small fry like me over here. Ah, uh, I guess it's to be expected of a member of Ihimochi's guard. You sure are haughty. Hey, Takeda, as Arata was about to step in, I just thought it'd be a good opportunity to spar with someone I'd never get to fight otherwise. Even so, perhaps there are plenty of other people I'd much rather have a chance to fight anyway. Fine, you don't like- No, nobody likes you is what it is, because you're a bitch. As he said that, Takeda glared towards me. He wants a match with me? I'm just a girl! He's in love with you? He's like, I don't know why I want that boy, but I do. <laughs> he's so gay for us. Aw, because he doesn't know we're a girl. And he's going to find out we're a girl, and he's going to be like, Oh, that's even better. That's why he's angry. <gasps> that's why he's such an angry bitch, because he's attracted to us, and he doesn't want to admit he's gay, guys. He hasn't realized that he's not, but he's just like, oh, oh, sweetie, it's okay to be gay, honey. Like, <laughs> I'm so confused about myself. Oh, that's why Takeda's is such an asshole. Also, like Ito coming in and fucking shit up. But like, oh, they're all just whiny bitches. This is great. Like, I stood there, puzzled by his suggestion, and Iba stepped forward. Very well, I'll have a match with you. Interesting. Why is it... Is it just funny that, like, Saito only have rest one eye? Just like a Cyclops. <laughs> I love my little Cyclops. But he is. You just realize that, like... I mean, they obviously drew another one, but you never see it. And it's just... And it also makes it because, like, the hair right here in his face... I'm sorry, I just get distracted by this. The hair coming over his cheek right here just makes his cheekbone look, like, really sharp and pointed. And you're like, oh, it's not a shot. It's just his hair because his hair's so dark. Anyway. But I'll be the... Educator, right? Is that what it is? I don't know. As Saito volunteered to referee the match, Iba and Takeda stood to face each other. Why is he volunteering? Ooh, look at his angry eyebrow, dude. Eyebrow. Swords on the ready. Fight. He can't scream when you're Saito. He, he gets angry and he's quiet. As Saito swung his arm to begin, the two moved into their attacking stances. So many scenes with Iba, guys. I just love it. I just hope no one got hurt. Especially Iba, since he just finished a match with Okita. Before we knew it, the metallic clang of their clashing blades filled our ears as we watched. Okay, now I want Iba to win. Ugh. Compared to the intense movements of his earlier match, Iba seemed to move a little more sloppily. Takeda seemed to have picked up on this. He flashed a menacing, menacing smirk as if he'd already won. Takeda didn't want to miss his opportunity, so he moved in with a strike that had the full force of his body behind it. But then, oh my god, it's like pouring like a fucking monsoon out, right? It's a little scary. You bastard! Iba followed the path of the incoming attack, and he narrowly deflected the attempted strike. What? Before Takeda had a chance to recover... In an instant, Iba shifted the tide of the match by pressuring Takeda and cornering his movements... There's no chance I'm going to let you take me so easily. I've had my fair share of opponents, and nothing you throw will surprise me. Ugh, you insolent shit! Takeda's face warped in anger, and he kicked the ground in an effort to close the distance between them. Ah! Takeda tried to stab his blade into Iba's throat with upward thrusts. Iba was able to dodge him with ease, and they're all just sitting there watching us like, Is nobody concerned? But Takeda persisted, then trying to thrust for Iba's stomach. Wait, was he actually trying to hurt Eva? No sooner had the thought entered my head when... Halt! Saito? As Saito shouted for them to stop, both men disengaged. What is it you're trying to do here, Takeda? 
What do you mean? This match was supposed to be an exhibition of both your skills as swordsmen. However, it's obvious that you're intentionally aiming for Hachiro's vitals. Especially when you're using a real sword. No Shinsengumi sword would be swung with the intent of carrying out a personal grudge. I have no idea what you're talking about. Shouldn't all of you know as well as I how easy it is to be lost in the moment of a heated match? Lost in the moment? Sounds like Mr. Funny Guy over here has jokes. Do you honestly think that we wouldn't be able to judge whether you're fighting with intent or just messing around? As the warriors circled around the match floor and critis to criticize Takeda's manner of attacking, Takeda continued to insist that he had no intention of harming Iba. Just then... I'm like waiting for it. It's like, just then, five minutes later. What's the commotion, gentlemen? I believe the rules of conduct explicitly explicitly say no personal conflicts allowed. I'm not doing Kondo's voice right, but whatever. Chief, please hear me out. As captain of the Shinsengumi, I've never broken the rules of conduct. Can you explain the situation here? Takeda nodded, taking his time to begin rattling off his list of excuses. As you know... The Tenen Rishin style of training with the Shinsengumi is always meant to simulate what real battles are like. When you're in combat, isn't it important to look out for when an opponent aims for your vital organs? So wouldn't it be helpful to fight in training like you'd fight in a real combat situation? Kondo stared back at Takeda, listening intently at what the latter had to say. But after taking a deep breath, Kondo offered his deliberation. I was watching your match from afar. One could easily observe just by watching you that your attacks were fueled by hatred rather than being taken as mere exhibitions of skill. Takeda's expression froze. I don't think I'd ever seen Kondo look as intimidating as he did when facing Takeda. And he's, like, shorter than him. By a little bit. It's an absolute disgrace for you to attempt to harm Iba, who serves the same shogunate as us. It's not something I'd expect from a captain. But please, wait, Chief, I... As of now, I have no intention of listening to whatever drivel you may offer as an excuse. I'll discuss with the other captains about the appropriate punishment for your actions. It suggests for you to brace yourself. Ugh. I could hear the teeth grinding from Takeda's mouth. Kondo dismissed himself curtly. Well, as much as I'd like to stay, I must be off now. All right, even though things panned out the way they did, I wanted to say thank you for your help with training the warriors. I bowed and Iba just stared back at me with a glum expression in response. Iba, what's the matter? Are you upset about the match with Takeda? Iba shook his head silently. No, I couldn't care less about that. To tell you the truth, what's bothering me is what Okita said earlier. That I knew. I knew when he... Was, is it bother... Takeda was like, please, it's Okita. He doesn't give a fuck about... <laughs> I don't care about Takeda. He's an asshole. Dude, Takeda's an asshole. Okita's not supposed to be that much of a dick. Okita? Oh, he must be referring to... Your sword has become pale and lifeless. After a moment, Iba looked up, gazing into the late afternoon sky, and he squinted. Back then in Edo, Okita and I sparred many, many times together. Ever since he was a young boy, he'd had a, a streak for competition, constantly pushing himself in ways to make himself stronger, but... He never resorted to such snide comments as he did earlier. Iba... Iba's eyes reflected the amber warmth of the sky forcing a smile through his pained expression. Well, I guess he's right, though. Compared to Okita's sword, mine is weaker. All those years ago in Edo, our skills were much more equal, but I guess we all know when he surpassed me. I had a feeling I knew what Iba was getting at. Compared to his upbringing, where he fought tooth and nail to survive, I grew up in the safety of Edo. This blade will always have that edge over mine. I've never faced an opportunity where I had to actually fight for my life, but I'm sure a day will come when I must confront life or death. Until then, it's critical for me to improve my swordsmanship and my personal resolve so that I may hold my head proudly without shame. Iba appeared to wrestle with those, these thoughts as the sun began to set above us. The scattering of its color against the clouds looked like blood smeared across a giant canvas. Eventually, he turned towards me. So, this is the place you call home now. Doesn't living here fill you with fear? Well, Toshi has told me some of the warriors that live here can become bloodthirsty monsters. Swinging their swords like demons and murdering people like killers. Aren't you scared to be all alone in a place like this? I gripped my fists. All of my memories flooded back to me, from the first night in Kyoto to the Battle of the Ikeda Inn, and so, too, did memories of other battles. 
There's no telling in the future itself or when we'll come face to face with death once more, and when those who are close to us will be taken. Iba looked as if he read my emotions from my expression. If you want, I can ask Toshi about the idea of taking you with me. My eyes become wide with bewilderment. How should I respond? Only if something were to happen. Thank you for your consideration. But I have the same goal as the Shinsengumi. It's imperative for me to find my father, so it makes more sense for me to stay here. At first, Iba was taken aback by my answer, as if he'd expected I would say yes. But it looked as though he'd understood, and he didn't press the issue. I appreciated his consideration. However, if something were to happen, would it be okay for me to reach out to you for help? Iba's eyes widened jubilantly. If we said yes, like... Of course! I would love to go with you and be like, yes! I didn't mean like that. No, I'm just kidding. Of course, we are childhood friends after all. His smile reminded me of the same cheeky grin he had as a child. And it's funny, so here's the cute part, right? We're childhood friends because he knew our father and blah, blah, blah. And we, like, knew each other as kids. But he also knew all the Shinsengumi members, like the captains, when they were, well, younger. Maybe not as children, children, but still. That's so cute. He's like, everybody's childhood friend! It's like we knew the Shinsengumi as a kid, too. But anyway. Just from the tone of our conversation, I could tell just how much Iba was concerned about me. If I were in his shoes, I'm sure I would have done the same for him, but... For me, this place is the only thing that I have that connects me to my father. Knowing my father has key information and research on the Furies means finding him was a top priority. There's no way that I could just turn my back on what I've done here and pretend it never happened. And more than anything... I wanted to ask my father the truth about the Furies. What led to him becoming involved with the Furies in the first place? Also, was he close to discovering a method of changing the Furies back to humans? All of these questions lingered in my mind. You don't look like yourself when you worry. I know it's kind of difficult to do in the present, but please, for me, keep your head up. His eyes stared with sw a sweetness into mine, and just then... Oh, there you are! Hey, Iba! I don't know who it is calling, so. Someone with whom I wasn't quite familiar was approaching us. Damn, how long do you plan on staying here for? Don't tell me you've forgotten your whole reason for coming to Kyoto. My apologies. This place feels so close to home that I forget how quickly time passes when I'm here. Well, I know many of your childhood friends are here, so I understand, but you gotta figure your job. For a moment, the man shot a probing glance toward me as if he'd been suspicious of me. Uh... Are you a member of the Shinsengumi? Yes, I am. Uh, I see. I don't see any other warriors, though. Are they inside the temple? Yes. Did you need to speak with someone? I could go call them. Uh, no, I don't. If you call them out, there's no telling what they'll do. There's no need for you to be scared. It's not as if they're going to bite you or anything like that. Well, I know that, but back when I was in Edo, I remember all the men who would start fights with me at the dojo. Judging by what he just said... Maybe he, too, had met members of the Shinsengumi during the... Shiei? Shiei holidays? I can't say that. I don't know. I can't. And it keeps coming up. Anyway. He sure seems intimidated by them, though. Mm. Kotaro Motoyama. This is Kotaro Motoyama. He works under the Chikisan... Hadamoto with me. Chiki-san. Hadamoto with me. Yeah. And he's in charge of records in the evaluation. Kotaro Motoyama. Takes me a minute to say it. He works with the books under the Chiki-san as a friend of Hachiro Iba. Did he say as a friend or is it? Okay, as a friend. He works on the, he works on the records as a friend. Okay. Hello, I'm Yukimura. Nice to meet you. Oh, oh yeah, right. Back at ya. If he's a uh, Chikisan Hatamoto, what I don't know what that is. Anyway, then he should be pretty high up there in terms of prestige. But for some reason, Motoyama seemed way more nervous than I was. Man, I never expected a person like you to be with the Shinsengumi. I wouldn't be so quick to underestimate just because this one looks like a child. Hyukamura is the Demon Commander's page. Demon Commander, wait. The brilliant war Toshizo Ichikata. <laughs> the demon commander. Well, that's actually cute because we're a demon and 
he can command us any day, honey, right? <laughs> anyway, <what> is... <laughs> look at his eyeballs. Wait! Toshizo uh... Hijikata. Let's go home, Iba. I don't want to die yet. Hey! Motoyama yanked Iba and they ran out of the compounds. It looked as though the Shinsengumi's name had traveled far. Even as far in... Even as far as in the Bakushin. However, because they had to get their hands dirty now and again, there was never a shortage of people like Motoyama who were afraid to see them for themselves. And then you meet Takeda and you're like, Fox, the Shinsengumi are scary! Or Hijikado seems kind of angry. Or Okita, who's like, hey, what's up? I'll fucking stab you. You meet the other ones who are just, like, nice and soft and, like, kind of squishing. Hajime is, like, so soft and cute, but he's but he's very quiet and brooding, so I feel like he'd be scary just because he kind of stares at you with that one eye. <laughs> he just one-eyes you. The hair over his face is like, I only need one eye to glare at you. <laughs> oh. This! We get to choose the notice board! Woohoo! Exciting! The notice board. We've never chosen that, now we know why. Just as Hijikata predicted, a few days later, the order came down for the Shinsengumi to guard the notice board. All divisions not on regular patrol rounds were directed to take turns on guard duty. The first day was quiet, and the men on duty spent most of it simply standing around. Hold on. <sighs> Man, I'm sleepy. I saw the word yawn, and it made me yawn, so I figured I would just throw that in there like a real one. Hey, you're becoming a real schlub. You need to sharpen up, man. No, oh, come on, give me a break. Pulling an all-nighter at Shimabara is one thing, but standing guard for a goddamn board all night really sucks it out of me. Um. <laughs> an all-nighter at Shimabara, Shimabara might really suck it all out of you, too. Who knows? Man, I hope something happens today. So, who's in charge tonight? <laughs> it's your division, right, Sano? Sure is. I'll discharge my duty with honor and enthusiasm. Just then. Oh, hello, Ito. Hello to you too, Miki. He's hot. Miki is hot. Not gonna lie. He's fucking hot. He's a dick too, but he's fucking kind of pretty. Such a douchebag. Share! Oh, look! We got a new share voice! <laughs> oh, I hello you three. Oh, pardon me. Were you in the middle of using this room for something? Ito and Miki enter the room, followed by a bunch of warriors from the Ito faction. What's the deal with all these men behind you? Are you up to something here? Oh, me? Oh, well, I was planning to have a debate session with my comrades, the topic being the subject of the new debate. I'm planning to have a debate on the debate. New debate? A book written by... Seishisai? Aizawa? A thinker in Mito. It contained Imperial Nationalist Party theory. Hmm. Would all of you like to join us as well? Heh. <laughs> sure a snide one, bro. There's no way in hell these guys would have the to read the four books and five classics, let alone be able to participate in any kind of debate. <laughs> giving him a cocky douchebag voice, and we're like, are you sure you can even read? I think I'm just kidding. Four books and five classics. Literature containing the core values and most important aspects of Confucian Confucianism. Is that like Confucius? Confucianism? Is that that's hard to say. Confucianism. I'm Confucius. Confucianism right now. I can't. <laughs> I'm trying to use that to say I'm confused. Get it? Ha, ah, but I can't, because it's like in my brain, it's like, <laughs> wow. Look, I can't read, okay? Oh my, what could have possibly gotten into you, little brother? Please excuse him, my dears. I apologize. Darlings, seems like this room is already in use, so let's find another place for us to flock. Ido and his men went back out into the hallway and disappeared. As soon as they were out of sight, Nagakura's face warped. Boy! Do his usual pain in the ass antics, huh? I know. He's gathering men and having secret meetings. Who knows what goes on during those meetings? I still don't get why Kondo and Heisuke brought him here. 
It wasn't just Nagakor and Harada who didn't seem to like Ito much. I'd heard plenty of the other captains and even some of the soldiers talking about him in less than glowing terms. There was no way Ito himself hadn't picked up on it, but he seemed to have larger concerns than his reputation, and had devoted his efforts to increasing his power base within the Shinsengumi. Oh, hello, Takeda. Why are we being nice? We should have been like, fuck off, bitch. I mean, hi. That's how I say hello to you, because you suck. But you're pretty. But you suck. I believe Ito and his men were here moments ago. Yes, they were just here. They went off to another room to have some discussion or something. What? Another room? Ugh, I told them to notify me when they have their next meeting. I wonder if they're doing this on purpose so I wouldn't join. Takeda muttered to himself, and he went out of the common room. Uh, yeah, because nobody likes you. I like you a little bit. <laughs> I just like looking at your pretty bitchy face. Bye, and your gorgeous hair. You have beautiful hair. He's got beautiful hair. What was that all about? I bet you anything he wanted to be Ito's lackey, but Ito wasn't giving him the time of day. Seems like Takeda doesn't really have much of a place for himself here as of late. After Harada said that, he suddenly got up. Yeah, what was his punishment? Well, guess it's time. I'm off. Oh, um, what? You want to tag along? Yes, because I kind of love you. Probably not a good idea, kid. Those demons are still after you, right? I can't take you out on the streets at night. Aw, I suppose you're right. All the sitting around all day started to make me chafe. I wanted to help somehow, but Harada was right. If I went with him, I'd just end up getting in the way. Well, please be careful, okay, Harada? Sure thing. Thanks. Ah, maybe he'll take us with him when it's our turn to fall in love with him. That night they struck, or tried to. Eight men from the Tosa Domain challenged Harada and his division by trying to tear down the notice board. Tosa Domain, a domain ruled by the opposition Daimo Yamauchi. The domain supported imperial unification, but many ronin of the Tosa region were imperialists. Fighting was furious but short. Harada managed to capture some of the perpetrators, although some of his captives later managed to escape. Harada and his division were honored by the Aizu Domain for their service to the Shogunate and were given a reward. <laughs> Nagakor's like, son of a bitch! When he was asked how the captured men had managed to escape, he simply replied, it was too dark to get a good look and said no more. Interesting. Oh! New background! Several days had passed. I accompanied the captains to a meal at Sumi. <laughs> Sumi, a restaurant located in Shimabara, the Kyoto Red Light District, where high-ranking courtesans can be hired for entertainment. <laughs> There's no quotes around that, but yes, I did air quotes. Entertainment. Courtesans. Um, yeah, they're not just sit there to sit there. This is not like a host club for girls where you're like, just tell me I'm pretty all day. No, this is like, see, girls can do that. You can hire a man who can just sit there and be like, I'm just going to flirt with you and tell you you're beautiful. And you're like, oh, my God. I'm, 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 anything I ever needed. That's why we play these games. Like men need to get laid. Because it's just not enough if we tell you you're pretty. Whatever. You just don't believe it. <laughs> I just don't understand why there's no, like, like you, if you look at it, like, if I go on Steam looking for, like, Atome games or anything, most of them are literally directed at men. Like, they're literally games where you're a dude, and you're after chick, and they're all, like, their boobs are the size of their heads and everything, and you're like, I just don't, I mean, they're not, like, Really, a Tome games, I guess, in that sense. But like, but like all the romancy, like visual novel games are like, it's like, hello, really? I think most guys are playing like, like I mean, I, I'm not saying guys can't play like visual novel games because it's like saying girls can't play like Halo and shit, right? But it's like, I would think that like a majority of the people playing visual novels, especially romancy ones, are I, I would just I would have directed that more at women. You know what I mean? You would think there'd be more like this. More like that. There are a ton. They're just not in English. The fuck, America? Localize more shit. That's why we're learning Japanese, right? So we can read this shit. It's going to take a long ass time. Been doing this for three months and I am just like... <laughs> swear. I'm not doing it like full time, though. I mean, obviously, like I do my normal study routes. So like I am better at reading it than listening. Like when I'm doing my lessons and stuff and like it says it, I'm like, I keep having to listen and I'm like, no, I don't catch it. But if I read it, I'm like, oh, I know what that says. So I'm better at reading it than like hearing it and comprehending it. <laughs> Bonus. Because reading it's usually the harder part, but I'm better at reading it. So 
Woo! Again, not that I can... Re uh, pronouncing it's different. <laughs> Takes a few minutes. <laughs> I'm not used to it. Anyway. Well, I'll be damned! You really did it, Sano. And I think you wanted to use that reward money to treat us all some good food. Well! Aw. Hey, if you're gonna suck up, you might at least try to mention how he actually got that reward. I'll get to it! I'm just so touched that he's gonna pay the bill. I think... I think I might cry. Tonight's on Sano, guys. Drink as much as you want. Forget your problems. Hey, don't go nuts, all right? Thanks, Sano. I'm gonna drink myself stupid, which shouldn't take a lot because you're little. Not everyone here can drink, you know. There's more to do than drink, you know. Eat, for instance. There's more to do than drink. Um, eat, you know. Good, thank you. Yeah, I guess you're right, Hijikata. Don't hold back. Drink all you want, okay? Why can't he drink? I'm... Okay, because you're on meds and you're sick, but you could still drink. Psst. Pussy. <laughs> I'm dying! Time for alcohol. <clears throat> oh, well, sake. What? Wait, 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 wait. Please don't tell me the commander of the Shinsengumi can't drink any alcohol. Damn you. You know what's up and you're doing this. So obvious. What is... I wasn't sure if it was all right of me as a woman to be joining them. But it wasn't an incredibly rare... Op but it was an incredibly rare opportunity for me to visit Shimabara. It's so pretty here. I like it. I could live here. Oh, God. Then I'd be a courtesan and have to... Oh, well, I mean... No. No, that's not right. This... They're in my man harem. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I guess I can enjoy the festivities while here. Thank you for visiting. A gagi in a beautiful kimono stepped through the uh, gr stepped through to greet us with a smile that was both dazzling and demure. What's a gagi? Gagi, a woman who works with clientele for private entertainment services. She uses cultural dances or plays musical instruments for her customers, also known as a geisha or geiko? Mm -hmm. Geisha. Okay. S mm hmm. Okay. Her skin was as white as porcelain with soft red highlights. Her lips looked soft and full, and her hair shone in the light like yards of fine silk. Oh my god, is this what's her face? Because we were here and I was thinking about it. I'm like, I wonder if what's her face, the. Uh, sends I, f I don't remember her name um, Kimi something right the Kimi something um, right that's her that's her all dressed up because of those purple eyes yes it is oh my god guys I was like just wondering if she's gonna show up and then this woman walks in and then I was like wait a minute I don't remember the voice I gave her so she's gonna but she's in her geisha costume so she's gonna have like a <sighs> voice anyway <laughs> Uh, okay, her hair shone in the light. Like, yeah, okay, we read that. For a moment, I stared in awe of her beauty, my own sex forgotten. Right? Something flickered in her eyes, but it was gone almost immediately. Then she smiled, and it was like watching a flower bloom. Yeah, Kimigiku! I am Kimigiku, and I will be entertaining you tonight. That's not her voice, but we're giving it to her in this outfit. Courtesan. Mm -hmm. Oriran? 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 Kimigiku, an Oriran courtesan of the Tenjin, Tenjin, second highest rank of the Shimabara, red light district of Kyoto. Oh, second highest rank. Courtesan of the month coming soon. No. <laughs> second highest. That's not bad, girl. You working your way up there. Damn, girl. She works hard for her money. <laughs> Please enjoy yourselves. Food will be arriving shortly. She's like, oh, it kills me to say things like this. No, look, now there's trays in front of us. We're all just sitting around the room. Indeed it had. And once the food had arrived, the party truly began. Man, expensive sake is way different. It just goes down so smooth. I can't wait to see them all drunk. It's going to be amazing. Uh -huh. You haven't even touched your food, Heisuke. If you drink on an empty stomach, you get drunk before you even have a chance to enjoy it. Whatever. You know how often I get booze this good? Never. So 
filling up on food just be a waste of stomach space? You sound like a bum. Just drink up. Hey, just because you drink like there's a hole in your stomach doesn't mean the rest of us can. <laughs> you having fun, Spacey? Doesn't look like you're drinking much. Oh, I can't drink, so I'm just enjoying the food. All right. Well, make sure you eat a lot of it, then. We're here to have a good time, so it'd be a damn shame if you didn't have fun. Aw. Pats on the head for being adorable. Thanks. Still, it was the first time I'd ever eaten anything expensive. Although, to be honest, I couldn't taste much of a difference. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you put enough ketchup and everything tastes the same. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I used to, I was that, I was that kid, like, ketchup on everything, and now I'm like, I really barely, like, french fries, maybe? You, like, you put it on a burger with some stuff, but, like... I don't drown my food in ketchup anywhere. But I'm just saying, you put enough sauce or something on something, doesn't matter if it's cheap or expensive, it's all going to taste the same. I've heard rumors that the men of the Shinsengumi were like demons or monsters. But from where I sit, you look a good deal more handsome than that. Almost like an actor. Yeah, I get that a lot. Oh my god, he just got a... I get that a lot! Ah, 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 ah! He's all angry, angry and grumbly and like, what? <laughs> yeah, get told I look like an actor a lot. <laughs> so vain and adorable. I love it. Kimikiko and Hijikata chatted, chatted easily while she poured him his sake, looking almost too beautiful to be real, like they'd stepped out of a painting. So this explains why when Sen shows up with Kimikiko, he's like, he knows her. And you're like, the fuck were you doing? I know the other three go there and... Lord knows what Nagakura has, but Hichikata, I just thought better of you. This is why. So now we know. He's not actually a hoe going out with the hoe. Like, he's not whoring it up. He's just, it was just this moment when she's flattering him. You look like an actor. And he's like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Hichikata. Just when I think you couldn't surprise me anymore, you do. <laughs> like, usually these fuckers. <laughs> I love it. This, ah. Uh... I love him. He's such a marshmallow. Oh, God. Still can't believe they gave all this cash just for p protecting a board. I mean, hell, imagine how much you would have got if you caught all of them. How did they get away? How did they get away, actually? You said there were only eight. That should have been pretty manageable. Yeah, what's up with that? Huh, I mean, you surrounded them, didn't you? How'd they get away? And how'd the guys you actually caught escape? Karata fell silent, his face slipping into a frown. He stayed that way for a moment or two, then looked inexplicably at me. Spacey, did you go anywhere that night? What? I hesitated, unsure of what he was getting at. No, I didn't go anywhere. Why? You're sure you didn't go anywhere that night? Yes, I'm sure. I've never left the compounds alone, ever. Hey, what's wrong? Maybe it was just a mistake. There wasn't a moon that night. It was dark. No, no, I saw her up close. There's no way I made a mistake. Um, Harada, what are you talking about? Well, you see, after we'd surrounded the Tosa men who tried to take down the notice board, this girl showed up. She looked just like you, got in our way. Because of her, our whole formation fell apart. What? The whole room went silent. Harada just spoke above a whisper, but each of us could hear him perfectly. A girl who looked just like me. Well, like they say, shit happens. But tonight, Sano's paying. So let's drink till the sun comes up. So seconded! Time to find out just how much of the stuff I can handle! He's gonna pass out after one. In just a few minutes, Heisuke and Nagakura had the party back in full swing. But I couldn't get my mind off what Harada had said. Then, what had he seen? I felt... perplexed. To be honest, I wasn't quite sure what to feel. I hadn't gotten in Harada's way, of course. There was no way I could have. But I felt bad. Someone who looked just like me made things more difficult for the Shinzengumi. I didn't know who she was, but our shared appearance made me feel responsible somehow. Who was this strange girl? You're worried about what Sano said, right? Oh, um, yes, I am. I was wondering how someone could look just like me. Maybe you got possessed. Whenever you're sleeping, a restless spirit takes over your body, and you wander the streets of Kyoto totally oblivious. 
Do you really think that's what happened? Maybe he was right. Maybe I was the culprit. Oh man, I'm just joking, kid. Could you not be so gullible? It gets boring if you fall for it every time. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Wait, why am I apologizing? Because he'll stab you if you don't. Anyways, do you remember that one time? You remember that girl we met on a patrol with Heisuke? The one who looked just like you? Oh, of course. The girl to whom Okita said I bore a striking resemblance. I'd almost forgotten about her. Her name was Kaoru. Do you think she was the one who kept Harada from capturing all the Tosa men? Well, do you think there are that many girls in Kyoto that look just like you? Well, no, but... But she was just a normal girl. She didn't look like the kind of person who would try to sabotage the Shinsengumi. Don't you know you can't judge a book by its cover? There isn't a person in Kyoto who doesn't know what the board represents. There was no doubt in his voice. So, so what, what would you do if the girl was the same one who Harada saw? Oh, you already know the answer to that, don't you? I'd kill her, of course. She might be a girl, but an enemy is an enemy. I love Okita. I think it's really just because he's got that little grin on his face where he just looks like... He just looks like he's so jokey and jovi jovial and having fun with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll fucking kill her. Ooh! And then he gets scary, and I just... It, it amuses me. He was right. I had known that he would choose to kill her. But to actually hear the cold finality of his words... I mean, he's threatened to kill us how many times? I couldn't just pretend I was okay with it today. Um, I need to go use the... Um, facilities. I just couldn't bear to stay in that room any longer. Were the girl we'd seen and the one who'd interrupted Harada the one in oh, were the girl we'd seen and the one who'd interrupted Harada one and the same? If she was interfering with the Shinsengumi on purpose, did that mean that she was an imperialist? Or was she simply doing it for her own enjoyment? After all, there wasn't a person in Kyoto who didn't know the name of the Shinsengumi. She had to know what would happen to her if she challenged them. There you are. I'd wondered where you'd gone off to. Hello, actor Hijikata. I'm Hijikata. I'm not really a samurai. I just play one on TV. Winks. Winks at you, smiles, the little sparkling of the teeth. Just, just say. <laughs> Something wrong? Food not your thing? N no, it's wonderful. The food, I mean, it's, it's something else. You're worried about the girl Harada saw. I mean, the girl that got in the way wasn't necessarily your acquaintance, right? Oh, well, yes, of course not. There was no hiding my thoughts from him, it seemed. <gasps> Woo! Woo! We're not supposed to get points with Hijikata! We're not supposed to get points with Hijikata, guys! No! Wonder. I wonder if we would have gotten points with Harada if we said the, op the other... Instead of perplexed, whatever the other choice was. Don't worry about it, all right? It's our business. Or was Soji messing around with you again, trying to shake you up? Um, I guess my face must have said it all, since Hijikata looked like he understood immediately. <sighs> seriously? The fool never quits with his tasteless jokes. <laughs> and then threatens to kill you. He's always joking how he's going to kill you, but that's probably true. But I always tell him to knock it off because it's a bad influence on our newer members. Without a word, he moved over next to me and... <gasps> Oh. My. Fucking. God. I sat down. I could feel a warm breeze drifting in through the open window. Then you're like, you really do look like an actor. Look how fucking pretty he... Alright, now it's time for the real party to start. You ready, Sano? We want to see it. Now you're talking... Can't have a party without Sano's unique performance! Hijikana, as much as I love your face, we need to go see this. Well, I guess I don't have a choice then, do I? How could I say no to you guys anyway? What a guy! Can you get us a brush and some ink, ma'am? Their voices echoed out from the other room, drifting through the warm air. I don't want to know what he's going to paint with. The look on Hijikata's face was one I'd never seen before. It's this calm, beautiful... Man, I never change. <gasps> Is he grinning? Um, I'm sorry? We used to run this poor sword school, Pacanito. We drank like this every time we got paid. This just reminds me of that. There were many who wanted to know how to swing a sword. 
In case of war or something. But no one wanted to learn from a bunch of country hicks. Barely had any money to run the dojo. A roof sprung on every rainy day. And the windows couldn't stand against a damn breeze. I remember thinking, we're not going to give up now. Someday we're going to put Kondo on the map. Hmm. Something up? Uh. What? Uh, <clears throat> huh. Huh. <laughs> You can't imagine that we went through times like that. Oh, well, um, yes. When I met them, Hijikata was already the commander of the Shinsengumi. So I couldn't even imagine in my dreams that they had such a rough start, or like him being a child. Being adorable. I want to see baby Hijikata. We saw baby Okita. This <laughs> is adorable. You're so honest. I still think about it every so often. It wasn't so long ago I was just a street merchant selling my family's medicine. Now I wear swords and work for the Shogun. Sometimes I wonder if this is just a long dream and eventually I'm going to have to wake up. The moon rose out of our window, and as he looked up, its light washed over his face, the cool glow playing across his handsome features. This sucks because this isn't his route. Oh, we're going to play the... Oh, we're getting the scene in his route too, and that's true. We're going to read through his whole route because I'm like, oh my god, though, we need this. Just like Kimigiku had said, he was as good-looking as an actor. After her, though, a girl like myself had to seem awfully plain. Especially next to a man as beautiful as he. Yeah, but how many men has she been with? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's what you got going for you. You're plain and boring. She's gorgeous, but... She makes more money dating lots of dudes. So I'm pretty sure her choices are gonna... Well, maybe not. Maybe not. It wasn't... <laughs> She's, like, basically forced into this. <laughs> Sweet Jesus! It's a pretty woman scenar scenario! Sorry, Spacey. It's Kimi Giku's turn. Uh. Gah! Oh, I can't take it. Stop it, Sano. I'm laughing so hard I can't breathe. Come on. You're the idiot who got me up here in the first place. Now you want me to rest stop right in the middle of it? You're the greatest, Sano. One more time. I really want to know what the fuck they're doing. The party lasted until morning. There was the Fury Corps to worry about, and now a girl who looked just like me. There was a lot to think about but it was hard to feel down when everyone around me was having such a great time. I know we're over time, but like, this is the perfect place to stop. Okay. We were in the middle of that scene and I totally, I was like, we were getting close and then we got to that scene and I was just like, shit, I think we might be like close to time. And I looked and I'm like, fuck, we like way over time. I know we usually go like an hour and like five-ish minutes, something like that, but like whatever. Seven minutes over. Anyway, I'm going to stop this here and we'll continue in the next part. So I will. See you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.